Welcome to the Three Old Goalies Podcast, a delusion group podcast. The Three Old Goalies are brought to you by thesquad.com because everybody loves the W. Check out the squad for all your recruiting needs. Music for the show is provided by the Floodgate Operators. Be sure to check them out on Apple Music or Spotify. The Three Old Goalies Podcast is not for goalkeepers under the age of 17. And now we send you over to Boa, Evie, and Boone, the Three Old Goalies. Well, welcome in, everybody, to another episode of Three Old Goalies. Uh, I'm E.B., joined by Greg Deutsch, John Boa, and our very special guest tonight, uh, from North Carolina. She's an assistant coach at Duke now, but she's done so much more in the game. Carla Overbeck, Carla, thank you for joining us. We have, again, we have been lucky in our, we have been fortunate in our episodes to have, uh, to be among soccer royalty, and we are again tonight. And we appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us, Carla. Thank oh, you. of course. Evie, thanks for having me, you guys. Well, we're 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 thrilled, and uh, I know I know Greg has a lot of questions. Uh, I I think I read somewhere because I got a um, an email from Bob Kepner that you recently won the leadership award for North Carolina uh, Soccer Hall of Fame, or it's named after you, or something like that. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so U.S. Soccer. Um made up this leadership award and named it after me, which was, I mean, an unbelievable oh. honor. And then I was lucky enough to go to their AGM and present it to the first winner. So it was pretty, pretty special. Cool. And who was, who was the first winner? If you don't mind me asking, sorry, Bill, I'm stealing your thunder here. You, you are, but that's all right. <laughs> sorry. I, I can curve, you know me. Yeah. Well, so, who, 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 and she's a friend of mine and, okay. um, committee that picks um that picked her and um, i wasn't a part of that committee but um you know was was a pretty special night because um obviously i have a lot of respect for her as a person as a player as a coach um and and uh to to present it to her the first winner of the carla overbeck leadership award was was really cool that's really cool that's wonderful and, and <clears throat> yeah and, and you know i mean at some some time in the near in the Distant future, we might have a three real goalies leadership award, but I highly doubt it. Hey, so, hey anyway, hey, Betsy, oh, she might be the first sweeper we've had, Bone, on this show. Like an old school <laughs> Beckenbauer, Carla over Beckenbauer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Old, that's right. Hey, and there, goalkeeper's, goal, 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 goalkeeper's best friend was a sweeper. Oh, man, we love, we love the goalkeeper. Without goal a doubt. Without a doubt, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Evie, I, I don't want to interrupt yeah. you because uh, I just want to make sure we heard who Carla said. So who won that award again, please, Carla? Uh, Leslie Gallimore. That's what we thought. Oh, wow. She's yeah. a GA now. Yeah, she just got a new job, right? Yeah, all good. Okay, well, I don't know if you've, I don't know if you've listened to any of our podcasts before, Carla, but uh, what I have, you, actually. They're funny. You, you have? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, we're up to we're up to sixteen listeners now, so we're 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 growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, anyway, as you know, you know, Greg Greg does all the interviewing, and you know, I fondly call him the Mike Wallace of soccer. So, um, without further ado, because everybody's busy tonight, I'm sure. But without further ado, I'll turn it over to to Bone and let him let him rip. Bone, go ahead. All right. Well, first again, Carla, thank you for doing this. Um, it is an honor. Uh, I cannot speak for John or Eric, but certainly for myself. Uh, Evie and John, when you hear some of this stuff, you're just going to be like shaking your head in disbelief. Um, So let me just share some things, as I always do. Um, One of the things that that stood out, Evie, is, you know, sometimes we have on the show somebody who's won the NCAA title once, right? Twice. She's won it four straight times. Okay, at North Carolina. And people, you know, seem to forget that um, because of all her international um, um, fame that she's achieved. I mean, she was the United States women's national team captain, Evie and John, for seven straight years. Wow. That is amazing. Thanks for the prize. I paid them. (laughs) Wouldn't ask. Yeah. Seven straight years. Um, 
she she capped you know she won the title in 91 and 99 um she also won the, the first uh women's soccer olympics in atlanta when they hosted the tournament you guys remember that she won the gold medal she also oh, won yeah. silver medal in 2000 um you know it's interesting carla when, when i did some research the crowds for these olympic games you guys played at what were your thoughts about that i mean were you surprised on the turnout for these games you were talking about the 96 olympics correct yes correct yeah. um you know we we didn't know what to expect um i know tv coverage was a little bit spotty because um, oh. the track and field was going on and uh, yeah. michael johnson was like running the under and breaking the record and doing all that so i think they kind of kept panning back and forth but mostly stayed on him so yeah. uh, there were like eighty thousand people in the stands it was unbelievable so you know we had no idea that nobody was watching us on tv um but it was it was pretty cool and, and a lot of people asked me like hey um you know what what are some of your most favorite events and it has to be that because just growing up as a kid you know, I would watch the Olympics every four years. And um, I love the downhill skiers. I loved Alberto Tomba. He was this Italian. I'm thinking, I want to be Alberto Tomba in the Olympics. And, and, you know, I grew up in Texas and there's no snow and no mountains. And I'm sure my parents were like, you are so dumb. Like, what are you talking about? But they just said, ah, oh, that would be great to be in the Olympics and encouraged me. And um, so for that, for me, you know, in your own country, playing for your country in front of all these people, um um it was just the first ever women's soccer event in the yeah. Olympics. you know i dreamed about it as a kid and uh to me that was really really special and it yeah probably that we won the first ever women's event. yeah incredible um you know you, you made a nice little mention of your youth so you grew up in richardson um texas you played for the dallas sting you won two national titles and you know i read some interesting information about your recruitment you were a little scared to go that far away to Carolina and you thought you might be going to Texas A&M. What changed your mind? Um, my basically, you know, obviously it was an amazing opportunity. Um, and I thought, Oh my God, here's this school that has won all these championships. You know, why is Anson calling me? <laughs> so I was, I was really nervous. I was such a homebody. I loved my family and, my brothers uh, and sister went to Texas A&M and I was just going to go there because I knew they come, came home sometimes on the weekends. And I thought, oh, I'd be able to come home on the weekends. And finally, my dad was just like, listen, you have this amazing opportunity. Your school is going to be paid for. Um, just get out and right. pushed me out the door and, um, you know, cried my whole first year. It was a disaster. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it forced me to grow up and otherwise I'd probably, you know, 55 years old, I'd still be living at home in Texas. And, um, so I'm, I'm glad I did, you know, it, it, like I said, it forced me to grow up and I was very fortunate, uh, you know, that I played a lot with and, and, um, among some of the best, you know, yeah. players. you know, I mentioned so. the four time NCAA champion, uh, three to Evie and John three time all American, um, four-time member of the NCAA All-Tournament team. A little wow. known fact that is just... Did you guys did you guys have a goalkeeper while you were there, Carla? <laughs> or did you just like... Nah. We did. Um, I remember uh, Ann Shiro, and it was so... Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. He, um, she still, I think, holds the record for the fewest goals um, for a goalkeeper in, like, the NCAA. Like, better. <laughs> Um, and the bummer thing is, I scored one of those goals on her. <laughs> so she should have only had one because I kicked one in myself, unfortunately. Nice. You know, talk a little bit about this streak that is so famous. You know, Carolina went 95 games straight unbeaten, 89-0 and 6. Share with us some of, you know, how much pressure you guys felt at, at, at a certain level and how Anson and you guys, you know, try to keep it calm? You know, I, I think while you're in it, you don't really, um, we didn't really know what was going on. Obviously we just, um, we trained to win. And um, fortunately we had some really good teams back then, um, had some great teammates uh, and the streaks, you didn't even really talk about the streaks. Obviously you wanted to win all the time. 
Um, I believe there are some ties in there. So it's not like we went undefeated, um, you know, with no blemishes. But, um, you know, looking back on it, it and being in the college game for 30 years now, I mean, it's it's impressive what those teams back then did. Yeah, it is amazing. Um, what, you know, um, as far as you mentioned, and I didn't know it was this long. I don't know if you guys did. 31 years under Robbie Church, as far as the head coach, and she's the assistant, really in charge, a lot of the defense. Um, my question to you is, where's that boundary where you want to say something, hey, Robbie, you might want to be thinking about that. Is there, I'm sure, you know, 31 years you can do it, but, you know, you're, you're known more for the defensive program there. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so um, actually, I, I've been coaching with Robbie. He came in 2000, so I've been coaching with him for um, – what is that? 23 years. Well, it just seems like 30. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Three of the four people in this panel have worked for church. So we're well aware of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he is, Robbie is an amazing man. He's a, an unbelievable boss. Um, you know, he lets me do, you know, pretty much whatever he listens to what we say. Um, and not, you know, not many head coaches are that way. They are very, um, you know, it's my way and, and that's the way it's going to be. But we have a lot of impact uh, input and, uh, you know, I think he values our opinion and, you know, he's just, he's a great guy. He's a great coach. He's a great leader. And, um, you know, I'm lucky that when the, when Bill Hempen left, he was the first women's soccer coach at Duke. Um, he's probably listening to this. Um, but I was very lucky when Robbie came in, he kept me on staff and, you know, he didn't have to do that. He could have gotten rid of me and brought, you know, his whole entire staff, um, from, you know, where he came from. So I, I was, I was fortunate with that. How much involvement do you have in the recruiting? You know, I did, um, early on, I did a lot. And then when Robbie, uh, became our head coach, I had two young kids or one young kid and, um, he understood because he's a dad himself that, you know, with young kids, it's, it's a lot and I wouldn't be able to go to their things. And so he just said, Carla, you know, I, I get it. Um, if you don't want to do this part of it, you know, get on the road a lot, you know, you don't have to, um, at the time he and Billy, you know, enjoyed doing that. And now he and Kieran, um, do that. But since my kids are out of college and, um, I'm, I wanted to get back into it. So over the past two years, I've been, you know, on the road and, um, talent identification. And, um, you know, obviously when they come to Duke, I'm very involved, but it's, it's nice now that you can actually get out and identify talent. And, um, so that's exciting for me that, that just started back like two years ago. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. What are your comments? And it really doesn't happen too much at Duke as far as with the portal, the transfers. Um, you know, I've talked to Robbie a little bit about this. Um, but, I think Duke's just an isolated case in most cases for women's soccer. I think the rest of the country, you would agree, it just seems to be at times a wild, wild west. Um, do you think this is going to continue on where, you know, you as a coach have a, not you specifically, but other coaches have a hard time building culture because of, you know, players in, players out? Yeah, it's, um, you know, now especially when um – when the this year's senior class uh they they are able to take a fifth year but I, I still think transfers are going to be a thing even um you know in years to come i think fortunately with duke uh we we are very uh lucky in in the way that um you know our our academic part of duke is obviously it's um it's very academic um we feel like we have a really good culture and we have a, a great team right now. And so we can be very selective with the kids that we look at on the portal. And um, not many people leave Duke for <laughs> obvious reasons. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we usually keep our team together and, you know, they're, they're very, very close. And like I said, we're very selective of who um, we bring in to our, to our team and to our culture. And luck, and luckily we, you know, we can do that. Yeah, you've had a lot of players go pro, and you yourself was a, a pro. Um, you were one of the first ones to start the pro league. 
Um, what, where have you seen the most growth in, in the league other than, you know, in my opinion, money just being th thrown with a lot of resources? Yeah, you know, they're, they're expanding. Um, I feel like they have a really good thing going. I think the talent that they're getting with internationals, um, with collegiate players, uh, certainly has grown since I was in the league. Um, and it's really exciting. The, the fan base that they have and the people that are coming out to watch them play. I know the courage, it was the courage actually when I played on it, yep. um, you know, back yep. in the early 2000s. Um, but our stadium was great. And now they've, they've made it a lot bigger. They've expanded it so that they can host these big, um, you know, college cups and international games. And um, I know this, the stadium, they fill it up and it's, it's really exciting to see where the women's game has come because uh, I never thought that I would see it in my lifetime, but now overseas with all these, you know, men's clubs that are having women's sides um, and the, the stadiums that they're packing. I mean, I was just at the FA final um, when Manchester United played, um, played Chelsea and um, it was, it was unbelievable. And they, it was 90,000 people and uh, I was doing the FIFA trophy tour. And so people were in, I mean, they were sitting, the line like snaked around the whole stadium for people to just look at the, the world cup trophy, get their picture with it. And um, I was just, I was just in awe how um, electric the crowd was. And it was just such a family atmosphere and um, it was pretty incredible. And, you know, in England, too, now, uh, Greg, they're looking at this as a profit center. The, the revenues are, are like 75 percent versus nine months ago. That's three quarters. Now, a lot of that's, you know, England being doing so good now, you know, winning the European Cup. But still, that's nothing. The quality's there and the revenues are there. People right. buy tickets. So it's great. And I know, you know, they're I, I think they're giving, a, you know, some tickets away and they're yeah lessening the ticket price. But I mean, that's how you get the people out for the first time. And then that's how you grow the base because they're going to love what they see. Um, the players that were playing in that game were, were unbelievable. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm so excited for the future. Now, I never thought, you know, whoever thought that overseas in England, they would have women's club teams. Attached to the, I know, right? Never. Yeah. Yep. So, really cool. Really yeah, cool. It, it is. It is, it is very cool. You know, I'm going to bring up something here, not to date you, but more to celebrate. Um, you can date me. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, you already said first, she coached 31 first, years with Churchy. Good God. Good God. She wouldn't be alive if she coached 31 years 55, with Churchy. 55. 55. <laughs> Her first cap was June 1, 1988, almost 35 years ago. Wow. Woo! What do you remember from that experience? What do you remember from that experience? Um, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, well, well, you won. I'm just going to guess. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I, I'm sure I was excited. Well, you know, it was funny because I didn't make the roster um, the first time I went into camp. Um, and so they went off to the tournament. I believe it was to China without me. And then... April Heinrich's father got sick and she had to come back to the U S and then I was, I guess the last one cut. So they asked me um, to join the team. So I fly over to China by myself and, you know, I'm this homebody from Texas and not, not wanting to leave my state, um, which is a lot different now, but um, that's, you know, I traveled to China by myself. And so um, I know I was really scared and nervous and I was just so happy when I finally connected with my teammates, like finally I, I recognize some people and they're my friends. And um, so I, I'm sure I was pretty nervous, uh, you know, obviously because I wasn't even chosen to go over with the team in the first place. So clearly they didn't want me, <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> who knows? I'm not really sure who we played or how we did. Um, so I, I don't know. Yeah. Share some, share some stories from, you know, obviously, you know, the 91 world cup was the first one. Um, obviously there's been a lot of talk on the food. Um, what else do you remember, uh, besides how bad the food was and how things you guys had to adjust? Yeah. You know, I mean, the food wasn't necessarily bad. It just was not what we were used to. Um, and 
back then, my um, it was my my husband now, but he was my boyfriend at the time was Anson's brother's partner in business, and so they had restaurants in Chapel Hill. Yeah, so that's right. We, oh, wow. Uh, we talked U.S. soccer into flying those two over to basically cook for us. Um, you know, we bought, we brought big wheels of parm, we brought dried pasta, we brought herbs, we got all this stuff like in our big equipment bags. And um, once they showed up, we were over there a week without them. And you know, those tournaments, because you're not used to the food. I mean, I would lose like seven to 10 pounds. And so you would get like really thin and um, it was just tough, you know, playing in that, that t a tournament of that magnitude. And you know, you're, you're, we had dropped weight and um and so we thought hey u.s soccer like this is what we need and to their credit they were like okay we'll do this and uh they came over after a week and they were there for like two and a half like three weeks because back then we played like a game and then we had one day off and then we played another game the next day so it's not mm -hmm. like you have the luxury of five days in between yeah. um, and so we brought you know my husband now and um pete dorance anson's brother uh, over to China to cook for us. And it was the best thing U.S. soccer ever did for us. Wow. What a story, huh? Yeah. yeah was a great cool. story. Yeah. yeah. Very cool story. Guy, so he's, he turned out to be okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, That's you know, 99, in 1999, when you guys won it, did you feel pressure because we were hosting it? Absolutely. And because everyone said... You know, no one is going to come watch you guys play. Right. Um, we're going to have these these uh, games in high school stadiums. I mean, could you imagine that? Like, what a disaster that would have been. Um, so every press conference we did, you know, Fowdy and I would be like, yeah, people are going to come watch us play. And yeah. we would just be up on stage, you know, all brave and puffing out our chests. And then the, the uh, press conference would be over and we're like, holy shit. You know, I hope people come watch us play. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, that fired that fired fouls up big time. That oh, was, yeah. Was, oh yeah, oh yeah. That was thing, man. her down. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Did you? Could you imagine a Rose Bowl with that many people? No. No. I mean, I mean it, was, it was it was just simply amazing. I mean, it was incredible. Yeah, it it was here. Yeah, and it was so cool because I was born in Pasadena. Oh. And, um, oh, that's right. Little yeah. Little so, yes. That yeah, was, was really, really cool. And, um, you know, it was every day. So they, they, because they were worried about, you know, how many people would come. And for that to be a success, the U.S. had to continue to win. And we all knew that, you know. So when we finally got to the final, we could take a breath and we're like, oh, you know, we did it. And then now we're like, okay, let's go win this freaking thing. Um, and so... You know, each each day, Aaron Heifetz, who is still their press officer at U.S. Soccer, works with all the teams. He's a stud. He would get on the bus and he's like, "Okay, they just opened up a thousand more seats, and they, you know, everyone bought the tickets up, so now it's a sellout." And we would like get all crazy on the bus, and that that would happen for like a few days in a row. I mean, and until it got to capacity, which was like over ninety thousand one hundred and fifty people or something. So. Uh, it was it was really really special. Yeah, we had we had Michelle Akers on, and we heard her experience in the final. Could you share your experience with us? Yeah, um, it was hot as hell, and uh, you know the game was just it was back and forth, and um, you know we wouldn't have won unless Christine Lilly headed that ball off the line. I mean, holy crap, that was unbelievable. Um, and then, you know, goes into PKs and uh, Michelle had gotten hurt and, you know, she was basically a machine. I mean, she was the best player on our team and um, such a force. Like in the back, it was so great because I could just kick any ball forward and she would make it seem like it was this unbelievable pass that I had given her, you know, 50 yard ball with perfect pace and perfect backspin and um, I mean, she was unbelievable. And when she went out, I was thinking, you know, uh oh, we uh, were we have a problem. And um, you know, fortunately, we held on. Um, when it got into penalty kicks, uh, she was supposed to be the the number one kicker, so we didn't really know the order after that. We didn't know who was going to be added to the five. 
Um, and you know, when Lauren Gregg basically got us all together, she was our assistant at the time and said, here's the order. And, um, I had replaced Michelle as the first kicker. So I'm like, okay, like buck up, here we go. <laughs> you know, like you need to make the first one to bring some confidence to your team. And, you know, fortunately I did. And, um, everyone made it, which is kind of unheard of, but, um, you know, we all had confidence in each other and it was just, it was amazing. So Carla, they told you guys. Or do they just say, hey, does anybody not want to take one? So we like we knew because, you know, you train, you practice those things yeah. all the time. And so we knew who pretty much the first five were. And then the next like three, so we knew like the eight pretty much was secure. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she did say, here's the order. Um, you know, are, is everyone good? And, um, you know, we're like, hell yeah, let's go. And so, uh we, fortunately, we all made it, and you know it was it was incredible. Pretty incredible. You, you mentioned you guys practice this. How much did you really practice this? You know, because you know you're a college coach. How much did you guys really practice taking PKs? You know, so what's that next level like? Is it every day you guys were doing it on your own, or you know, how's that worked out? Yeah. So we usually had some time after training, and um, we would, you know, get, grab a bag of balls, and we'd. Um, just make it a routine and the goalkeeper, you know, sometimes the goalkeeper would stay. It was crazy because, uh, Harvey, she would drive me crazy when she was in the goal. This was early on taking PKs because, you know, they memorized where we, which side we'd go to. And obviously you want to be proficient at both sides. And so, you know, we would do that, but, um, it would just make me crazy sometimes when they would guess and they would be standing and you guys, you, you know, you guys would mess with the, the kicker's minds, right? You're like standing on the post right before you <laughs> kick it, right? So um, sometimes when some goalkeepers were in the net, I would just blast it down the middle and I would get so angry. So I like to do it without the goalkeepers in the goal um, and just try to like work on my precision. I'm thinking, okay, even if they guess the right way, then, you know, hopefully they still won't be able to, to save it. So, uh, but Tony was a master at this and um, we did all this, you know, imagery stuff with him and i remember we were in china one time and he was like okay we're gonna um you're gonna practice and we're not gonna have a ball you're just gonna imagine yourself going up to the spot kicking the ball into an imaginary ball into the goal and then celebrate like you scored and so you know all the it was so funny because there were all these spectators on the on the fence you know watching us and we would go collect the ball and like get the ball from the referee imaginary referee imaginary ball and we'd put it down and then back up and, and do your routine and everyone was celebrating and it was, it was hilarious. And I think the spectators were all going like, what in the hell is going on? With that? What it was, a good story. It was what? great. I mean, it worked and um, you know, we all made them. So we, we were doing something, about, something right, but yes, you do practice and train those things like on a daily basis. Yeah. And, 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 like, collegiately. Um, you know, now with uh, the ties and even last year when, you know, you played um, overtimes um, until the tournament, until like you needed a winner, like ACC tournament. So, you know, a couple weeks before the ACC tournament, we would start doing that with our with our girls. It, yeah, it, it's just amazing. You know, as you say, you know, another we'll give a shout out. If you guys remember, we had Kim Wyatt. I think you know her very well. Oh, yeah. Yep, she was on the program, outstanding episode. Um, obviously, she was part of, you know, she was the first woman uh, part of that national team as well. Um, let, that girl you know, was crazy, too. She was crazy. Yeah, she was. You know, I don't know if you knew, I went to school with her at UCF. And the yeah. first time I met her, she had that gold razor blade, you know, <laughs> yeah. on the neck. Scared me. You know? <laughs> yeah. Or like, where are you from, Miami? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, little segue here, you know, as far as the coaching. So, um, in your backyard, there was a million dollar 77 soccer tournament called the soccer tournament carry 32 teams. Um, like I said, $1 million on the line. Uh, you participated in that. So share with us, you know, we had a lot of questions with that. You know, whose idea was it to put together? How did you get involved? Who picked the team? Um, I can share with everybody. The talent on this team was incredible. Um, just a little reference here. 895 
caps. 895 caps. Uh, four, four World what? Cup winners, uh, seven Olympic uh, gold medal win winners. So just an outstanding, uh, on paper, um, resumes of all these players. What made you, like I say, want to get involved and in how did you, uh, you know, how, whose idea was it? Yeah, so um, basically Heather O'Reilly uh, reached out and said, hey, I'm trying to put this team together. Um, will you play? And I said, hell no, I'm not going to play. And, <laughs> you don't, trust me, you don't want me to play. Um, and so she's like, okay, what about coach? And I said, okay, I'll do that. Um, and, you know, all the credit goes to her. She, um, she put up the, the money. She, oh, wow. Um, yeah, raised, you know, she got a bunch of sponsors. She um, got the team assembled. She got the coaching staff assembled. And, you know, the, um, if they, they weren't world cup champions or Olympians, they were, you know, unbelievable collegiate players. I mean, the only goal that we scored <laughs> Joanna Lohman from Penn state, she went to Penn state. Um, she scored it and it was just, um, it was an incredible experience. And, you know, obviously, you know, in the back of my mind and maybe even the front of my mind, I knew that we weren't going to win or win many games. But, um, you know, just being a part of it, um, the media that was out there, um, the fans that would come watch us play, uh, it was it was amazing. And, um, you know, here you you have, you know, Wrexham, we had to play against Wrexham and um, Como uh, 1907, I believe. And, you know, they just they're, you know, really good, really good teams. And, and Wrexham had like um, the retired guys, and then they had the young up and coming stars. And so obviously none of their, you know, first team guys were there. So, uh, but still, you know, you're playing against guy pros and even yeah. male, you know, collegiate players. And, and they were just, they were really good. Um, yeah. Was, so, yeah. So some questions, of course, you know, how much practice, where did you practice? What were the practices like, you know, you're playing 77, no offsides. You're going to sub on the fly. You're not allowed to tackle smaller goals instead of eight by 24, seven by 21. So share some of those insights, you know, to some of those uh, questions. Yeah. So, um, so basically Heather assembled a zoom and um, all the players and the staff were on it and she was going down the list of like, okay, um, what have you guys done? And it's not, you know, recently to train and it's not just kicking around with, you know, your kids, um, be serious and, and let me know. And, you know, some of the women were playing in co-ed, uh, league, some, you know, were, were still around this area and they get together and they played, but, um, you know, it wasn't like they were training hardcore, like physically they were training hardcore, but not really playing soccer. And so, um, I was like, okay, well, we're going to be fit. That's for sure. Um, and we had one, one training session for about an hour, uh, the <laughs> night before, the night before, <laughs> the night before the game started, some of the players didn't even get there until the first day, like Lori Lindsay. Um, she didn't make it till like the second game of the first day. Um, so, you know, it was, we were pretty relaxed about it. Um, obviously Heather was, um, was very, very passionate and we all wanted to do well for Heather because she had put so much time and effort into assembling this team and, um, organizing it and organizing all of us. And so, uh, Bill Palladino, um, Mia, Mia flew in for it also. Christine Lilly, obviously it was so fun. They stayed at my house. So it was really fun seeing them. Um, but Lil actually played, she's crazy. I think she was going for her like 1000th cap of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, yeah, so we didn't train, but one hour prior to the, the games, and that was on a Wednesday night, we started playing on Thursday, um, and we didn't get out of group play, uh, but, you know, the fans were amazing, and even when we were losing to Rex, I'm like, nine to nothing, they were like, they would be chanting USA, and the stands were packed, <laughs> and, you know, afterwards, they stayed after and got all these autographs, and uh, it was it was a lot a lot of fun and i'm hoping that the tournament um you know maybe one of the reasons that they let us in one you know we would uh drive ticket sales but two maybe generate some enthusiasm and maybe they have a women's tournament next year so 
Like, how cool would that be? Exactly. That'd be great. Yeah. I, I was not aware until Bona told me that it was not like there wasn't a women's division or a men's division. You were just out there with whoever showed up. Yeah. No, that's what I wow. thought. I said, so wait, come again, like out of the <laughs> yeah. teams, over 420 teams that, um, you know, requested to be in to enter the tournament. Uh, 32 teams were chosen. I said, and we're the only women's team in the tournament. And they're like, yep. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I did nope. see two other females. Like, Como had a female and then one other uh, female. And when we walked by them training, we're like, all right. You know, yeah. Yeah. And, like, we want to play that team. But I, I want to make sure I heard you. 424 teams apply. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I heard on the radio, Adam Gold uh, does a local show here, and he was saying that they had over 420 applicants. Because and this was at 10, do it again this was, this was yeah. yeah, this was at no. 10, I don't know if you guys knew this, you know, the fee was not on a sliding scale. So, right. you know, Heather's group, I think, got in at 10K, and then it went up, I'm making this up, Brian, you might know more, uh, uh, 13, then 15, then 18. And, you know, Clint Dempsey had tryouts. I don't know if you knew that, Carla. Yeah, well, John Kerr, yeah, John Kerr at Duke had a team. And I want to say they, they, you know, uh, had like a training and picked some guys from that. <laughs> 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 we, we clearly were not that serious. I mean, I take that back. Heather was really serious. And so we wanted to be really serious for her. But, I mean, come on, you're playing against men. So, um yeah, what, what what were you know? It's funny you say that because like everyone wants to hear that. Like, what were your expectations? You just answered that not too high playing against men. And when you say that, was it the physicalness, the speed? You know, share a little insight to that. Your mentality about that. Yes, 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 yes. What else? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. some of these guys were massive. I mean, we played against. Um, uh, say word and it was like a um, HBCUs and they were some like just out of high school but one guy was 6'5 six, 6'5 five, six, five. Yeah. and so yeah. we're thinking you know on all the corners like what the hell are we going to do right um, even they, they kicked in there weren't throw-ins there were kick-ins um, and so we're like okay what are we going to do if they just flight the ball into the box like we have no chance um, yeah. I will say, so they were quicker, faster, stronger. Um, technically we, you know, after we kind of figured out how to play a little bit, um, I felt like we, you know, could string some passes together, but they're so quick front foot defending, they would step in front of us, you know? So, I mean, it was, it was tough. And I will say the games would have been probably 25 to zero, um, had we not had Lindsay Harris in our goal. I mean, she yeah, was she um, was on fire. Unbelievable. I'm yeah. hoping that some team picked her up because <laughs> the saves that she was making, you know, these guys, they just shoot with such, I mean, you guys know, yeah. with such velocity. Those I mean, I, I was hoping no one was going to be hurt. Like each game, each time the game uh, ended, I'm thinking, oh, thank God no one got hurt. Like that was kind of my goal. Oh, yeah. It was it was crazy, and how she would just throw her body at these guys, and it's it's like not from twenty yards away. We're talking five yards, and they're just bashing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if, any, if you guys saw the highlights of that ransom game. And what Carla's saying is so true. I mean, she would have to make so many double saves, maybe even triple saves at times. It was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy, and yeah. the, like at the end, the, the very last game. She was kind of like shaking her hand. I was like, "Oh no!" I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, Lindsay, are you okay?" And she was like, "Yeah," like, like brushing me off, like, "Yeah." And she came out, and I was like, "I have to." I go, "You know, are you okay?" And she goes, "Yeah, just my elbow kind of like bent back the wrong way." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, like." What was, do you remember? What do you remember? I'm curious. You know, first, you know, before the first game, and then at halftime, and. You know, take us through. Okay, you know, now you got to get them fired up for Wrexham after getting beat by you know them. I mean, share with us like you know some of the stories that you're thinking or what the coaching staff wants to say as a group. Yeah, and you know the girls like the women out there had so much pride, and you know the the style of play that the U.S. plays is you know we jump all over people and right. we wear them down and we're we're so athletic and 
um, they came off at halftime and they're like, Carla, we need to start pressing. And I'm just thinking, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then like we press and they break, you know, the first line of pressure. And then our team is, you know, then what do we do? Because our team is so stretched. There's no offside. Yeah. Um, so I was like, um, you know, okay, maybe we'll try that. You know, you don't want to shoot them down, but I'm thinking, mm-mm, we're going yeah. 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 to be as close to a goal yeah. as we can. I mean, <laughs> Let's, let's press with no offsides. That'll work. That'll yeah, work yeah. Yeah. Yeah, about a minute. Yeah, like <laughs> the girls, and you don't want to like squash their intensity. And but I was like, you know, okay, maybe after game two or three, like I mean, last game, maybe we can press, like just to go <laughs> the whole time. Nope, that's not a good idea. Yeah. That's Reg, the power that's play, good. the power play. Yeah, we're working. Yeah, the power play. <laughs> we're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> Oh, we just said, you know, obviously when it was, you know, five or six to nothing, whatever, at halftime, we're just like, hey, you know, just try to keep possession, try to connect passes, and we'll just continue to work up the field. You know, you're not going to beat them over the top with any long balls. Um, <laughs> you know, our, our hands were kind of tied because the opposition was just far superior. So, Were, you, su were you surprised by the Wrexham score? Well, not really because, like, it was goal differential. So – in order for them to advance, you know, they had to keep scoring. So, like, at first you're like, okay, guys, like, get over yourselves. Like, every single team in this tournament could beat us like this. Like, quit being right. jerkish. But then you're thinking, okay, a million dollars is on the line. <laughs> and they have pride. And they're probably pissed that they got matched up against a women's team. So, you know, I, I don't know how I would act in that situation. But I will say – all of the guys, like after the games, were very gracious. They all wanted their pictures with us, um, oh, and so cool. you know, during the game, obviously, they wanted to win. Um, and you know, Lil would tell me the guys, you know, she's standing next to a six five guy, like you know, hey, take it easy. And he's like, ah, oh, don't worry. So they were they were great um, as far as like kicking us, and um, you know, you know that you know we can't match them physically, and so uh, they were they were really good sports and. Um, you know, they had to run the score up because it was goal differential. Yeah. 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 I, I was going to ask you, you know, before the draw, how much were you following it? You know, uh, I mean, were you looking at the website every day to see what teams were adding? Um, or were you just like, okay, hey, you know, okay, we got in. Thanks, Heather. And then all of a sudden you're reading Borsha Dortmund. <laughs> you're reading, yeah. you know, uh, Charlotte. Uh, you know, yeah. we can go on. I mean, who's her army? Yeah, uh, Como, you know, right. I mean, the, the, list, you know, them, yeah. the list goes on and on and on, right? Right. Um, I, you know, I, I agree. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And um, I didn't think much more of it until uh, the day before, like, the press conference. And then they started saying, you know, it's they're announcing it. It's going to be hitting. You're going to get these questions. And, you know, can you come out to media day? And I was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. I mean, it was a big deal. I mean, it was all over. You know, I didn't really grow up with social media, so <laughs> – Obviously, you know, you know about it now, but I mean, it was everywhere. Our AD, Nina King at Duke was texting my, hey, how can I get in as the water girl? You know, and, <laughs> and will that qualify me to win a million dollars? And I was just like, you know, ha -ha, we're not going to win. Um, yeah. But, yeah. You know, you cer certainly you can come out. But I mean, it was um, it was really cool. And um, I had no idea what uh, what it was going to draw for our games. And, um, you know, people came out in droves to watch us play. And it was really cool. Yeah, it obviously sold out the finals on CBS. Yeah, uh, yeah you couldn't get a ticket. Like, it was – all the games were sold out. At least our games were, so. No, it was – yeah, sold out everything was. Uh, uh, were you surprised on how it ended as far as, um, you know, the two teams that played? You know, I I, I didn't – I didn't really know because – oh, there she is, Heather, our star, our captain, our stud. <laughs> um it's, it, we had fun, man. You know, it was just, it was fun. But I, I, um, because I didn't get to see many of the other games cause you know, you're doing press stuff and, um, you know, they escort you to and from, from your trailer to the, you know, to the things and all these people are wanting autographs. We just stayed after a long time after games and signed tons of autographs. And, um, you know, you just, you had a lot of time in your games. So we actually went home and then came back and, um, oh, wow. we didn't, I didn't really stick around and watch a lot. Uh, but, um, you know, so yeah, I, you know, you know it, it's mentioned, uh, just so you know, Carla, 
it looks like there will be a women's division. Yeah, yes. definitely. Oh, of course there would be. Yeah, Absolutely. Would, that would make yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just so you and, knew that. And, yeah. You know, the real the real two questions here are, well, the real two questions are. <laughs> Sorry. A, a, did anybody from U.S. soccer watch this? Well, of course they did. But more importantly, B, did anybody's light bulb go off and go, hey, we can apply this to the U.S. Open Cup. And yeah. what a great tournament it would be. Yeah. You know, and why there's not a women's U.S. Open Cup in the United States of America ridiculous. is ridiculous. Thank you very much. I mean, right. my and, friend Cindy, who is you know the president of U.S. Soccer, she's had mm -hmm. a lot to deal with uh, since she became president. So I'm sure... You know, after this World Cup, and um, you know they'll start to analyze and, and figure some things out. So, um, you know, she's a smart she's a smart one, and um, I'm sure she's probably already thinking about that. But I've got a question. Sorry, I think we're we're curious since you sort of went over that real quick. Have you spoken to her specifically about what Evie said? No, I have not. I promise you that. I have not. Okay. Okay. When we get together Look. for lunch, we don't talk about soccer. It's the best yeah. thing. He has yeah. a young kid, and I love hearing about what Steve is doing. And um, we, because soccer is such a big part of our life, um, we we don't even talk about that. So Yeah. Well, just a little bit of background, Carla. I have been ranting on this since we started <laughs> the podcast. Oh, yeah? I, I mean, I do it at least once, once an episode because – uh, it's you talk about a property that 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 U.S. soccer owns that could be expanded to, you know, a to grow the game, b to make a lot of money, uh, c to you know to garner a lot of fans. U.S. Open Cup because everybody likes the Cinderella story. Yeah, everybody to, does. To every town yeah. in America to every take the mountain. Yes. Prominent. Yes. You know, it's named and, after Lamar Hunt. Who yeah, I mean, it's just love. it's just it's crazy. That guy is, yeah, right? It's just yeah, it's just crazy because the the most fun games to watch in the English FA Cup are the early rounds when you know they're playing it like Gillingham or someplace like that, and it's a little tiny stadium, and Manchester United's out there, and they're going to win. Everybody knows they're going to win, but the people get into it, right? Oh, yeah. and, you know, and so I just, I just, hopefully uh, that. You know the with the success that you guys had both on the women's side, but for sure on the men's side with this tournament will translate to hey, let's give this a shot. Let's see if this works. You know, let's take over this property that we already have and build it, and see if it works. Because you talk about garnering interest. I mean, my goodness. Just, EV, when that happens, man, we are going to replay this episode or all the episodes that you've talked well, about. Well, all the episodes. It'll be all the episodes. Because right. of EV, man, it's happening. Well, Carla, just to put it statistically, in, you know, in England, which is the size of, like, Rhode Island or whatever. Right, right. 2,300 teams joined the FA Cup. In the United States, last year, 87. Yeah. Yeah. We're a little bit yeah. bigger. And I did have one question, Carla, as a coach. How many of your players at the Seven Aside Tournament's parents called you to tell you? <laughs> did, they, did they call you and say you got to play my toss? <laughs> no one, thank you. <laughs> Whoa. Woo. Top All to right. bottom. All right. the manager. Start All those back. parents deserve a medal for not calling me to tell me to put their kid in. Good to hear. I think a lot of people should do that more. <laughs> yeah. Parents. Let me. Yeah. You know, Carla, talk talk a little bit about um, first. You know, there's a new league coming with the USL Super League um, that's going to be introduced. You know, within the next two years, um, and how do you think that's going to impact the NWSL? Are there enough players to feed? You know, all these teams. Yeah. Uh, you know, I yes, yes. Yeah, there are enough players for sure. EB says yes. Um, you know, our kids um, at Duke, Carolina, NC State, Wake Forest, they're all playing um, in that type of women's league. It's the under-23 league right now mm -hmm. um, and doing great. And it's a, it's an, it's a you know, great environment for them to play in the summer. Um, so I think any kind of evolution um, will just be a good thing. So yeah. I agree with EV. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the USL, you know, I mean, the USLW um, – I'm not sure they've, you know, I've read some teams. Um, I don't know 
if you're aware, I mean, it's going to be, I think, 12, Ryan. Am I, am I right with that? Uh, I, I believe that's correct. I'll get a yeah. quick check on it, but I believe that's yeah. correct. Um, and, and they're not in like a lot of big cities either. Um, but I just wonder your thoughts on, you know, how this is going to affect the growth of, of the NWSL. I mean, Boston's coming on. Um, San Francisco's coming on, as you know. Um, and Real Salt is back in. Um, there's going to be more expansion. Um, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, do you think they're taking the right approach by going at the slow rate? You know, I think so because you don't want to dilute the um, the product. Sure. Um, so in my humble opinion, I think, um, yes, they're doing a good job. And then that way they can, you know, check out these markets and see if, you know, having a team would be sustainable and, um, you know, so I think they're, you know, I don't, I'm not a business person. I don't know the plan and everything, but I feel good about how it's progressing and, and, um, how they're adding expansion teams. Um, but you know, I love the idea of, you know, bringing these USLW, whatever you were saying, Greg, um, to these small towns and how great would that be? I mean, did you guys watch welcome to Wrexham? Like I love yeah. yep. that. I love that show. Um, I got a Wrexham hat. Like I, you know, jumped right on board with the cult with all these people in the U S and, um, it was just it, like, it's just such a feel good story. Obviously that they got promoted, you know, help that, but, um, you know, what, what that town, just how they believe in their team and support their team. And, um, I just, I just love the story and, um, I fell in love with, with that. Yeah. Yeah. So USL Super League teams 2024, just so we can get a quick rundown. Carolina, yeah. Dallas, Fort Worth, Lexington, Phoenix, Spokane, Tampa Bay, Tucson, and Washington, D.C. in the first year. So are those um, in hopes that those would filter into a, a team in that city or would that team move to another place to, you know, to franchise or so my, my understanding is a lot of these teams are joining into existing USL markets. So like okay. Lexington is going to be Lexington SC's women's side and they play in USL league one on the men's side right now. Okay. Um, and then Tampa Bay has the rallies <laughs> obviously. Um, and they're going to have a women's side in the USL Super League. Um, and then in 2025, they're looking to expand to Chattanooga, Indianapolis, which we know is Indy 11 already because they've already announced. Um, Jacksonville, Madison, and then Oakland, which is involved with the Oakland Roots who play in the USL Championship. The Roots, yep. You know, I'm curious. You mentioned Washington, D.C. Is there going to be a big fight because of the NWSL team there? That's okay. I mean, that's a good question. I don't place though. I mean, it's it's yeah. got a pretty big, pretty big market, right? Because they're in like a tri-state area, similar to yeah, very true. Yeah, you know, um, but I mean, I think that I think that they've probably done their research and think that they can put something in there and and make it work. Um, but the Super League is very interesting. So what the the ladies are playing in now? That's the USLW. That's the amateur league, right? So. The players that are at Duke and Carolina and NC State are playing in, in that league. Um, and there's some local teams around the Cincinnati area, like in the Midwest. So Indianapolis currently has a team there, Lou City, uh, Kings Hammer. They all play in that division here locally. Um, but the Super League um, looks like it's going to – some of those USLW teams are going to move up to the Super League, and some of them will still have their USLW team – and a Super League team. So they'll have like a first and second team in the women's division, I think is basically yeah, how I sense. see it. And I think, guys, that Lynn and Carl, you made uh, – Lynn Burling, I think, is involved with a, a minor league women's team as well. Oh, okay. A club, sorry, league, not team. but uh, Oh, another one. Uh, Lynn oh, wow. Burling, whose father started Soccer America. Yeah, and right. Yeah. With NS, yeah, NSCAA. I think she's the, kind of the commissioner of a minor league women's professional – well, amateur – Slash professional league, so oh, cool. interesting. Yeah. You know, Carla, the WSL, right? The yeah. Women's Independent Soccer League. I think you're right. You're correct. Oh, okay. That's why he's a producer. Ryan, you're know. the guy, man. Oh yeah, man. He's good. He's I mean, good. Well, best in the business. 
The best, goal, the best goalkeeper podcast producer there is, I would say. I mean, yeah. I, yep. It's just like I tell my daughter that well, she's my favorite daughter because I only have one. That's yeah, why I'm, the, no, best. Bit, I'm yeah. the best goalkeeping producer in the in the business. Well, you're, you're the right. best goalkeeper. You're the best <laughs> over fifty over fifty goalkeeper podcasts. Podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not for I'm, the record. I'm not over fifty yet. I no, you're not. No, hair. that's why. Yeah, and, and us, <laughs> us old guys appreciate you for that. No, no you. So, so yeah. Carla, I've been wanting to ask this question. Um, so it's. it's I don't think people know, you know, she, she mentioned she had two kids and one is a volleyball player named Correct. Carter and yep. she plays at uh, university of North Carolina. That's right. And what I, what, what I'm really, where I'm going here is not a lot of people know she red shirted, right. you know, and I just want to hear because, you know, you played at a high level, you coach, what were the good and bad when you guys were talking about red shirting and I don't think people know, but now she's got a new coach. Now, luckily, he was an assistant coach when she was there. But right. just, you know, a lot of different moving parts here. And we'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, again, you know, you're a parent and you're a coach. So you get to, you know, see both sides of the red shirting. Right. Um, so she played soccer growing up. But in high school, she had to pick one because it was just too much doing the two club things. And. Let me tell you, when she did pick volleyball, I was so excited because, you know, when you play it, when, oh, there she is. Oh, she is. When you play it, you live it, you coach it, you do all these things. Um, and, and it was something new. Like I played in high school, but it, it had evolved so much till now. Um, so I was so thrilled. And, um, you know, she always wanted to stay around, you know, go in the ACC somewhere. And, um, and she had been going to, to volleyball camp at Carolina since she was, you know, tiny. And um, it's, it, it was kind of always her dream. And um, she would always say, Mom, I'm going to go to Carolina and play soccer like you did. And I was like, all right, you know, let's go. And so, uh, you know, when she decided and they offered her a spot on the volleyball team, um, she was thrilled. And um, they had a lot of players in her position. So she's like back row, um, DS, libero. Um, and you know, I said, you know, when they wanted to redshirt her, I just said, man, you get the opportunity to basically train for one year and you screw up and make mistakes in training. It does not matter. You'll get to play in the spring and you get to be in college for at least four and a half years and maybe five. So four, four summers on Franklin Street. That's not bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, um, you know, I was like, that, that is a positive because then you're going to come in as a freshman with, you know, collegiate experience, um, you know, when you, when you can actually start playing your sophomore year, but you'll really be like a freshman. So I was, I was all about it. And I just said, you know, for your growth as a player and as a person and, you know, college are the best four years of your life. And now you'll get to spend an extra year there. So, um, I was thrilled for her. And, you know, I don't, I sit up in the stands. I don't say a word. Um, I, uh, you know, I sit by myself and uh, people think I'm probably a snob, but um, I just, and I'm racing to, you know, from Duke training or a Duke game and I'm changing my, getting out of my Duke gear and putting my Carolina volleyball <laughs> stuff on um, in the car. And uh, it's, it's, it has been such a thrill for, for me and my husband, uh, to watch her play at the school that we both attended. So it was, it's really cool. And yeah, she, that is cool. Very, very cool. I, I just, you know, again, you know, that adjustment, she, she's a very good player and all of a sudden hit the brakes for a year. Um, what did you notice in say that six month period from August when she knows she can't play till, you know, the end of the season in November, is it like now she's just all fired up? Hey mom, spring's coming. I've been, you know, I can't wait. Yeah, you know, just because she was around um, coaches and, you know, leaders for a lot of her life. I mean, some of her, you know, my teammates, they come into town all the time. And so just the quality of people that she's around, you know, that I, I grew up playing with and, um, you know, what better role models? There are no better role models. And so um, I think being a coach's kid, like, uh, you know, you know, you um, your role, you know, if you don't get to play and you're sitting over on the sideline that you'd be a good teammate. Um, you cheer your team on, um, what, 
whatever you can do from the sideline or in training, you have to shag the balls or whatever. That's what you do. Um, and you earn the court time. And just like you would earn your time that you would get on the soccer field. And, uh, you know, she, you know, she knows if she's not playing, then she's not good enough. And so uh, I noticed a real big, you know, she was always really good and supportive and, um, you know, she would encourage her teammates. So I was really proud of that when I saw her in action on the sideline, her red shirt year. Um, she was always, you know, positive and, um, you know, cheering for her teammates. And, and that made me really happy. Um, and even, you know, this past year when, you know, she didn't get to play or she would come in, she'd make a mistake. And so she wouldn't go into the next rotation. Uh, she would be cheering from the sideline and, and she knew that, okay, the coaches think that, and know that there's someone better than I am. So that's why they're playing in front of me. And so I, I was really proud how mature she was um, about that understanding of, you know, your role and you support the team no matter what. All right. Pretty simple there. You know, before we go, I, I don't know, guys, if you knew this, she wrote a book. They cooked another them. author. We have another oh, author. On yeah. the show. Oh, well, I didn't write it. I didn't write it participated in it i um i lent my name and likeness there was this nutritionist that you know was all gung-ho and uh, about doing a soccer mom's cookbook and so um i wasn't in on any of the recipes and um you know darn it one of my questions was you know <laughs> one of my questions was gonna be what's special about the rookies pumpkin oatmeal cookies <laughs> you know what i do know about the meatloaf in there and i make that meatloaf to this day and it's awesome so all right yeah back to you ev well again i mean you know we continue oh there it is right there <laughs> ryan cool. man you are That's good cool. you are like oh my gosh yeah. so, ryan's on top of it ryan's on top of it so uh again you know we continue to have to be fortunate to have guests on who have played it the highest levels of this of the sport in the world in this case and um carla we can't thank you enough for uh for joining us tonight and taking time out of your out of your day to to sit around with three old guys and, and talk i i don't know if greg told you this this is this whole thing was predicated on you know drinking beers at the coaches convention sitting around telling soccer stories and oh you know, i knew all about that yeah, yeah, exactly. And we, you know, I was like, we should do this, you know, in a podcast. And, you know, as it turned out, it works, but it only works because we have people, on, we're lucky enough to get people on like you who can, can share their, their views and, 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 and share their experiences with, with all 16 of our listeners. And it's great. And, and uh, we, we greatly appreciate it. And, and, you know, like I said before, three of the four people on this panel have, have worked directly for Churchy and, and, so we have a we have a kindred spirit, which, which you know, put your hand over your heart if you work for Robbie Church, and uh, <laughs> uh, you know. But uh, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, continued continued good luck and success with everything you're doing. Uh, certainly continued uh, good luck to your to your daughter, and and uh, um, that that sounds like I mean, it sounds like she's living her best life, and that's great. Uh, that that's that girl great. living the dream, that's for sure. But that, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm very grateful to you guys for having me on. Obviously, um, you're a lot of fun, and I've worked with you guys. And, um, you know, just, just thanks for uh, what you've done for soccer and um, women's soccer. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I just feel very fortunate that I was able to be on here with you guys. So thanks and for having me. This is a historical episode because I don't think we dropped one single F-bomb, did we? Not me. That's a first. That's that a is an absolute it's not first. Over. It's not, it's not over. over. It's not over. It's not over. Not over. Yeah. I mean, I mean, way to yeah. be gentlemen so, for the first time on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, I think it was a year ago. I I asked Churchy. I was like, "Hey, can you get? Can you ask Carla if she'll be able?" He's like, "Walter, she thinks she costs too much." And I thought, <laughs> "Okay, all right, I get that. I understand I that. Fair enough. Fair enough." You know, MF is my favorite word, I will say. Oh, okay. so, uh, okay. I was trying to keep the language in check. I think I might have said shit once, but um, 
one okay. and it, yeah. that's that's so much less than normal around here so it's fine yeah yeah that's yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'm not yeah. sweating one episode for... where everybody said are you gonna yeah. edit that yeah. out and i went i'm like no. starting to, i'm sweating yeah. too i'm like don't we, say it don't yeah. say it. <laughs> we, we've had no f-bombs but we had we did just receive an, an mf grenade so there you go we're, we're magic but he can cut that out so <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> Well, well, really, we really, don't, we yeah, leave yeah, those yeah, in yeah. unless they get really, really bad, and then we cut the whole segment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, again, Carla, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, uh, we would love to have you back on at some point. Oh, you guys are awesome. I'd love to join again. Please okay. have me back on. Okay, Good to see we'll you. We're going to we'll hold you to that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Right. Although I think there are more. So, you guys are doing a great job. We love your podcast. Hey, Thank Carla, you. before you go, which ones have you enjoyed? Because I'm sure we are all curious. Oh, here we go. Um, <laughs> no, the Becky Burley one. Oh. Oh, wow. You're an old listener. Yeah, so I saw um, the Kim Wyants. I saw some of those, heard some of those. Um, That's a good one. Hank. Wh which Hank? <laughs> yeah, Hank, yeah, Hank <laughs> we've had Hank. So, I think we've, what is that, four, four or five episodes yeah, with Hank, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so, no, I've, I've listened. Okay, and before you go, we need your prediction for the Women's World Cup. And just so we all know, uh, Aubrey formerly Bledsoe, Cincinnati girl, named on the roster along with Roosevelt, yep. two Cincinnati girls. Uh, my first, my first World Cup player. How about there we Aubrey? go. I was going to make sure that you you did throw that out there yeah, since I, I knew that was the thing. I'm a very Good. humble guy, but he went to Wake Forest, right? So yeah, four year starter, never came off the field. An yep. Amazing story, uh, amazing family. Um, amazing person. Um, she texted me the other day. She can't tell anyone till Wednesday, you know, because she just found out. That, yeah. yeah, right, right. So what's your predictions? You know, what, uh, how do you think we're going to do? Um, obviously, my with my heart, um, USA all the way. I hope they win and uh, get the historic three in a row. Um, I, you know, England with Serena, one of my former teammates at Carolina. Um, but the injury bug, unfortunately, has gotten them as well. So I, I thought they were going to be um, a contender. I know Spain's going to be really good. The thing is, as you guys know, uh, soccer, anyone can win on any given day. So um, I felt like in 19, we got a little bit lucky with the PK um, against England. Um, so I, I want to say the U.S. I'm going to say the U.S. because uh, I, I love them and I want them to win and I think that's an incredible squad. Um, I mean, you could rattle some... off any of the six teams that are 10 to one favorites and be, you have a good shot at being right. Right. So U S England, Spain, Germany, France, Australia. Yeah. Those are like the top six. Yeah. Um, and they all have an honest chance if they can get out of their groups. Yeah. I mean, Sam Kerr, you know, she could, she's a game changer. So, uh, she can put the Definitely. ball in, in anywhere. Uh, yeah. And when you have her on your team, like we had Michelle Cooper at Duke, uh, she's a game changer. So mm -hmm. you can't so bet. How long are you going to be over there? So I'm leaving um, because we have preseason. So I'm coming back on the 20th. I leave on the 28th and I get back on the night of the 28th. So I'll be able to see the first two U.S. games. Um, I'm going to do some stuff probably with FIFA for the opening game on the 20th. Um, but I'm excited. I've, I've, been to a bunch of them i've been to some of the men's world cups and so i uh i can't wait um i'm hoping that my sister's passport comes in time so she can join me and then some of my teammates i think lil's going over with her kids um Foudy's going to be there obviously cindy pardo is going to be there um i'm hoping mia and tisha venturini will come so it's there's going to be a bunch of us so look out carla yeah. Julie, i said hello i haven't talked to her in ages one of my favorite yeah. people I, please tell Julie I said hello. Oh, I people ever I haven't talked to her in ages, but she's yeah. yeah. Let us let us ask this question. You know, maybe some insight because you have a relationship with some people at high levels. Twenty twenty seven, will the U.S. get the World Cup for the women? Uh, I I hope so. Um, I hope so. I, I don't. I do know some people high up, but <laughs> I have not talked to them about that. Um, but, you know, obviously when the U.S. gets involved, as you guys know, um, they do a really good job of putting big tournaments on. And 
Um, I'm hopeful that, you know, the people at FIFA will see what, how well we've done in the past and will grant us the World Cup in 27. It will be 100% in the United States. Period. Yes, because if FIFA, if FIFA doesn't know how to do anything else, they know how to make money. Yeah. And they'll, they will, they will, well, spring I mean, off, every they will springboard off the, off the, off 26th the World Cup. And they'll no. be there. Yeah. Did you guys, did you go to France in 19? No. No, I mean, I it was like I was in the U.S. I was in Paris for the first few rounds, and then I was in Lyon for a semifinal and final. And it was like I was in America with all the people from the states that went over. It was unbelievable. Um, it was like well, yeah, it's a it's a dual ex excuse to be there, right? We're gonna <laughs> yeah. win. We're gonna win this thing, and we get to go to Paris. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. I'm hoping that everyone comes, even though the trip, you know, from my flight from Dallas to Sydney, it's like 16 hours and 45 minutes. Um, so that's going to be a long one, but um, yeah. I'm hoping that everyone jumps on board like they did in 19s. I mean, it was, it was incredible. The yeah. support that the U S got so proud yeah. of everybody. All right. Thank you again, Carl. Okay. Thanks a lot. Carl. We appreciate it. Right. You're rock yep. stars. Thanks so much for having me on. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Have a good one. And now for a little post-show discussion along with Boa's trip around the globe. A couple Carla Overbeck things. Three, three Carla Overbeck things. Uh, we were on the national staff together down in Cocoa Beach for the under 17s, and Siri Mullinax was the one we went through. EV, I, that was my first big coaching gig. EV got me in there because Roland was the head of the region. Yes. Okay. Wow. So, and Carla and I got, I did, I, we didn't know each other. We just hit it off and we played every night, you know, do the 7v7 with the staff. It was great. Second thing is, she can't answer, but EV, you can't either. But uh, Ryan and Bone, uh, I did not know that Carla was from Richardson, Texas. Correct. You know who else was from Richardson, Texas? The captain of the Duke men's national champion team. Kelly. Six. Kelly Sumba. Kelly Weddock. There you go. Kelly Weddock. Kelly Weddock who Come on, man. Years, Come who on. Three years old. Well done, Greg. Um, and then thirdly, nobody prepares for the show except for Greg, who busts his ass to get these wonderful <laughs> yeah, questions. Ryan, who comes up with like the, the best Googler ever. But the fact that every single player and every single coach and every single human we've had on this show, the people here notwithstanding, they talk about character a lot. A ton. A yeah. lot. And we don't bait, we don't send them questions. We don't talk, you know, she listens a little bit, but we laugh a lot. But she, when she was telling that story about her daughter, yes, on the bench, red shirting, shagging balls, that kind of, that is character, guys. And, and I, we don't yes. have enough of it. And I that we almost talk said, and I almost said, gee, that doesn't sound much like the Reinas, but I remembered that she <laughs> probably played with Danielle. Now she told so I me, wasn't going to go there. She told me that she was, she's our, she's exactly my age. So she yeah. was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Those guys were later. Claude yeah, was like yeah. a full generation behind me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's right. Because Claude is Taylor's age. Yeah. So, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, but, but it's just, it's interesting. Greg Deutsch, once again, a wonderful uh, interview, man. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, that was good. And the, and the, the, but you're right, Bose, you know, and again, being a coach's kid, mm -hmm. right? You know, sh shag the balls, shut your mouth. No, you coaches. Wrong. If the coaches think someone's better than you, they probably are. You know, <laughs> that's that's totally up to you. If you're gonna, to, you know, if you're gonna get in there, it's not up to the coach. You know, all that, all that stuff that like you're talking about is character. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I didn't yeah. really realize that till you just brought that up. I mean. Uh, she, what an it, what's what stories, right? I mean, that's exactly why we have these. We can, we can, we can probably do a whole other show just talking about the players and the coach. I mean, how many games has Anson lost in his life? Eight. So Maybe. you got you got the, you got the manager, you got the players, you got the national, you got the global thing, and like systems and how Julie Foudy, who can't you know kind of ran that midfield and yet you know Michelle Akers, we is our favorite guest ever, right? Yeah, he was just a phenomenal football player. Phenomenal football player yeah. by by any standard. Yeah. Um. So I'm sure Carla's got a lot more, a lot more stuff. So. So yeah. Anson's been at North Carolina for 47 years. Yeah. Probably. That's accurate, right? Like yeah. I, that's accurate. Uh, and he coached Ryan. He coached men and women for a long time. Yes. So. Yeah. 
Like, he won his thousandth game. <laughs> in 2018? That sounds right. And it was his 828th victory as the women's coach. Right. There. That's incredible numbers. Like yeah. just incredible numbers. You know, you know he'll be on the show if we want him. I mean, well, we want well, him. We're kind of if we want him. Of course, him. Yes, we, want him. we do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, li- he listens to the show. Like he'll like when I send him. You know what I send? The him. hell is wrong with him? He listens to the show. <laughs> <laughs> he, I don't want him on the show now. For the for the yeah. record, we he, have he, thirty-one he recurring that, listeners you know, on a regular basis now. Like he's, we've uh, doubled our fifteen. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he uh, he sent the Joey Elsmore to Mia Hamm that episode. Did he good? Okay. I, I said, hey, could you, you know, when you get a moment, he's like, just did it. He loved Ralph Lundy. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, okay, I'll I'll, I'll reach out to him. I, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you a story. I I actually worked. I was actually co- the goalkeeper coach at Carolina for two weeks before I took the job at Parker Athletics. And oh, had, little trivia there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we had to move wow. to Charlotte. A player and to the name later. It, it, yeah, yeah, and so and I know I, either you brought it up, Greg, or maybe uh, Boa did during the thing. But um, you know, somebody asked, "Well, you know, how many goals did you actually? How many goals did your goalkeeper actually give up?" You know, so I'm coaching this kid, and she had been at Region Three. Her name was Shelly Finger. Good, good. Oh yeah, yeah. Good yeah. Goalkeeper, right. So I, you know, and I knew who she was from ODP, but I was like, I never. So I'm out there and I'm whacking balls at it and I'm running training and everything and we get a water break. I said, Shelly, how many, how many, how many goals did you let in last year? And it was just like something like four. I mean, something ridiculous. And I said, I said, well, do you you happen to know how many saves you made? She goes, Yeah, I made 18 saves all year long. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck am I doing here? What, you know, <laughs> what the hell am I here for? You yeah. know. 18, well, like, I like 18 saves for the whole year. And take they, into they consideration, the, yeah, even last, even last year, EV, last year, EV, they only gave up 20 goals as a team in 26 matches, right? So the, oh, that, goals, yeah. the goals per game was 0.77 per game last year at North Carolina. How many yeah. saves? How many saves since we just brought that up? Does it uh, say that? Um, I can find it probably, but I bet it's not many. <laughs> yeah, but, see, but, but back, but, but 82, Ryan, back 82 then, total, 82 total, 82 total saves. Is That's for a game. My freshman year at Belmont Abbey, I had 350. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how I told AJ his freshman year at Mount St. Joe's going to be. He's going to have <laughs> multiple hundreds. Um, but so the year before, so in 2021 at North Carolina, and we'll hit some Duke stats too, just because these are crazy stats in my mind. 0.72 goals a, a game wow. in 21. And then in 20, they gave up, you're going to love this one, 0.45. There you go. New product, game. For, new product for Soccer Village, the North Carolina goalkeeper chair. <laughs> That's it. Just you sell know, it. Foldable chair. Sit on it. That you, yeah, that you That's see awesome. the North Carolina goalkeeper bring out before the game after warm-ups and just sit in the That's six-yard funny. Box. Yes. Just so, crazy so, hey, John Bo, hey John, I want to ask you since you worked with her, you know, and you and you said you know you played seventy seven. Was she playing in those games? And what yeah. was what was? Oh, she did. Oh, okay, I mean, this was nineteen. Let me count. This was uh, 1991 or nineteen ninety two. Had probably ninety two after the World Cup. Nineteen ninety two. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got to see the space shuttle take off. Uh, and you know the kids, the girls were just the, what the young ladies were just curl over back. Um, but she has just always been this down to earth, just yeah, you know, yeah. Um, so yeah. what what would you say since that was your first time on that staff? Like, did you know Evie was gonna like get you on, or it was like, hey, what are you doing this week? Well, I was playing. Sorry, let me rephrase. I was sitting on the bench in Miami. There we go. Um, and, uh, we had a all-star break or something, you know, cause that's what you need when you get 20 people going to games. <laughs> and he, I don't know if, if it was something in the family or something, but we had like maybe younger kids the week before. And he's like, told it rolling. He goes, Hey, Boa can do this. I really need to go back to North Carolina. So it was 92. 
Uh, pretty, that's exactly right. So anyway, but yeah, it was a great experience for me. I still put it on my resume. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was a great, great staff and Siri Molinax was the keeper we bumped up, which, you know, shows yeah. my coaching prowess. I picked one of the best goalkeepers ever play in this country as the number one in the region because I know I can ID talent. Yeah. 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 And but, Becky, well, Burley, Becky Burley was on that staff. Yeah. The, oh. uh, those staffs, like, you know, but oh, yeah. we, had, we had Kim Wyatt on uh, when, when, um, uh, a couple of times when we were down at Cocoa Beach, I remember she was on the staff and uh, Taylor went down with me to train, you know, when we weren't doing ODP stuff and she would come out and train with us, you know, and she would do, she was like, she was better than Taylor. I mean, she was, <laughs> I love, I love Taylor, but she was better than him. You know, Taylor will edit that. So, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it was back in the old days when, when men were men and sheep were nervous, it was fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we go, let's roll back to stats for a second, just to put it out there in perspective. We talked about the North Carolina stats, right? Now they've won, what, 21 national titles? I think yes. 21 or 22, somewhere yeah. in that neighborhood. Now Duke, who is a complete powerhouse in their own right, like the ACC is stacked. Right, let's on the women like women's soccer in the ACC is stacked. It's like yeah. seven of the top ten every right. year. Right, yeah. right. I remember when Greg and I were waiting for the. Um, it was last year when we were waiting for the NCAA tournament pools to come out. I walked into his office and I was like, "So, do they get nine in?" And he was like, "What? What nine? And I was like, "I mean, yeah." And I think the Big East might only get two. And he was like, "There's no way." And they got. I think they got nine in. Well, I mean, I'm, sure. <laughs> I'm uh, pretty Randy, sure they got nine in. Our buddy Randy Waldrum, who was a brilliant fo soccer guy, football guy, is at Pittsburgh, and they finished in an eighth, ninth place in that league. Right, but they could yeah. win just about every other league. Yeah. Oh in yeah. The country. Oh yeah. Like, um, so in 2022, Duke gave up one goal per game. In 21, they gave up 0 0.57 goals a game, and in 20, it was 0 0.81. And then in 19, it was 0 0.70. I think it was EV. I think it was EV when, in college when, when I was right, you know, 80s. No one was talking about going to the pros, first of all. And, and no one ever talked about going early, right? Like John Bush did. Yeah. yeah. And I think EV made a great quote um, about, about goal, when is a goalkeeper ready? And he said, you're not ready if you're still letting in a goal a game in college. Yeah, got to be down to that point five, that point four, that point five, and you got to be able to when you're dominating, you're seeing that one shot and stopping it. That type of maturity and a, as we talk about emotional intelligence, but I that always stuck with me that line. Like if you're letting one goal, I mean, when you go to freaking Dagenham and Redbridge, you're gonna be letting in like five or six. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, Carla made mention of um, Michelle Cooper. Um, about her being drafted, but Duke had three players drafted in the NWSL draft this year. Um, Cooper, Sophie Jones, and Delaney Graham. So, you know, three really, really good players left from Duke to to go. I know Cooper was a sophomore, right? So she left early. Yeah. I thought she was a junior. I think she was a junior, yeah. and, yeah. you know, she came out. Steffi, jo Steffi Jones is, is what's-his-name's sister, right? The quarterback from the Giants. Oh, I think yeah. Was, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Daniel Jones's sister, and you know Michelle Cooper was from the Bradenton Academy. Our buddy Alex Chater down there. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, but I asked Churchy. I was talking to him about his fake heart problem, trying to copy me. And I, I said, "Is she the best player you ever had?" And he wouldn't say it, but he's like, competitive wise, she was just she would not stop, and she would win games by her. Oh, yeah, there were there were games where you yeah. like we we've retweeted them on Twitter actually goals that she scored with Duke as being like the goal of the weekend for wow. for matches that were played and she was a sophomore oh, um, she and, was? yes and then Sophie okay. Jones was a senior and then Delaney was a grad student okay so number two um, pick Cooper. yeah number two overall pick yeah here's here's um, some trivia John Bush who'd she sign with John Boa. My mom. Yeah, John Bush. I was like, Bush is here? Yeah. Bush is here. <laughs> what happened? Long JB. Um, she signed with 
The Chicago team. No, no, no. Brand. Sorry. Oh, she signed with either the New Balance or a oh, New Balance. New Balance. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Churchy was there. I had that too. I know. I know. And he said that they were very classy, like very, you know, we're going to do this all around you and they're going to do an apparel line. And, um, and then she's right up their alley. She's young, um, good player, obviously, but uh, you've seen their commercials. They're, they're doing all right. Right. She signed with Kansas City Current. Close. Kansas City, the, Chicago. Was yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, just. <laughs> Just want to make sure we we go over where she actually signed, so people aren't like they don't know. All right, but, all right, Bo, what do you got for us? Well, you know, instead, not because I'm lazy, because I love this. And again, Ryan, thank you, Greg Deutsch. That was great, um, really great. It, it you know, it's really great. I didn't uh, really do anything except go to lunch with Greg today and talk about what he was going to talk about, so I could start prepping. Well, we're trying to get <laughs> we're trying to get you an Emmy. You know? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. gotta take the credit, take the adulation. No, I, I appreciate idiots. it. Who are those idiots? The the prince and the and the fake princess from England that now live here. Spotify just fired them. The prince and duchess of Windsor, the redheaded dude. Oh yeah, yeah. Harry. Hey, Spotify Harry. just just fired them after paying them twenty million dollars, and the head of Spotify called them grifters. <laughs> I can get paid to do this. Yeah. Wait. So. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. Ryan, there's room for us. There's room for us. There's room for Ryan. Uh, but thank you. They've both. got all that money that they've got sitting aside on Spotify. Hey, throw us a bone. Uh, yeah. Get it. I, I, I'm not going to talk about anything at the top level because the season's over. Um, Liverpool did not win a trophy. So no. what, what's the point? Um, so no big league recap. But just a couple things that have been interesting. Um, I, I would like to start with, since we are – Again, FA Cup, EV, and all of us. <laughs> Here um, we go. You know, we know. Good Lord. Um, but uh, Manchester City, who has been the best team in the world for the past eight or nine years, they just needed the big the big one, right? Yeah. They validated it. Yeah. Um, they won the treble, which, if you don't know what that is, the real treble is your country cup, your country league, and the European Cup. Liverpool has won what they call a fake treble, which was two domestic cups and the UEFA Cup. Um, which hasn't happened before, but that doesn't really count. Um, but that is a monumental achievement. Um, I know they have the best players and the best manager, but you're talking 38 league games. You're talking about going away to Sheffield United in February to play FA Cup in the second round. You're talking about, you know, getting kicked, being a pro, traveling, going on places where there's no hot water. Um, and, again, it would just do our players – Character again, build our, building character to be able to c concentrate on three different tournaments, and the manager going, okay, guys, we're going to Sheffield. There's, there's no grass on the ground. We're not going to be knocking it around the back, you know, try and learning and evolving and becoming real, real pros. Because um, you know they had some scares, but again, uh, what a great, what a great team. Uh, did you guys watch the game? Yes. Was never in doubt, really, was it? No, no, <laughs> not at all. They never got out of second gear. I mean, they just kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, again, very, very interesting. Um, a, another thing uh, I found interesting is, so you have the pros. Let's use, let's use Manchester City as an example. You have the pro team, and then you got the B team, which is kind of the reserves they used to call them, under twenty right. threes. And then you have the youth set up, which competes in their own leagues, 18, 16, 14. Okay. Well, um, the, the, the under 23s, they have now changed to be the under 21s. Now you can still have, and these are professional players, they're not national teams. Okay. You can still have five players play that are over 21 coming back from rehab. You know, I blew my knee out right. I'm for a run. I'm like, okay. Everybody knows that. And that's what another thing we lack in this country is the B team. You know, Rude Hullett got to Los Angeles. He goes, oh, we'll just train the B team. He goes, we don't have one. He's like, well, let's just go play Stanford. They're like, you can't do that. It's illegal. Right. Right. <laughs> so, you know, again, there's a, there's a real – but what they've done in England now is pretty clever – or not clever, somebody else's idea, but they call it the Swiss model. So they've taken their own 21s and they put them in their own league and they've gotten rid of relegation because the managers have, have started thinking – that the promotion relegation is came by winning games, winning games, which is part of it, but they want to develop players. 
and especially if you're English, where most of the good players, most of the good teams are foreign, that might be something to get them back up to that youth level of look. You know, we got a 16 year old kid. We're going to play him against again men, mm -hmm. <laughs> 21 year old guys. Um, but they took the promotion relegation out of it. You still get competition. You still play everybody twice, and they're putting it next year. The Champions League is changing to this pod system. They're putting more teams in. And it's like a little league, little league, little league, and you kind of go up like a pyramid. They're going to do that as well. So you still get a little bit of that combat. But, again, somebody was sitting down thinking about this, fellas. Yeah. Someone was talking. <laughs> someone from the club called somebody at Tottenham who called somebody at Newcastle and said, hey, what do you guys think? What are you seeing? Okay. Like, yeah, Finally. Yeah. Going, to the FA, going to the FA and saying, we, you know, we don't have to yeah. get permission, but what do you think? Yeah. I, again, I don't see that in this country. And we didn't really get into that with Carla, well, with her buddies. The head yeah, of, yeah I know exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, there's that fine line, right? Because we know that she's close with Cindy Parlocone. And that's, and that's fine. Like, cool. But we've got teams and coaches here in the United States complaining about playing too much soccer. Did anybody see that article? Yeah. No. So, LA Times um, released an article today. Enough is enough. Too much soccer is aggravating MLS players and coaches. Oh, for oh you know, the commissioner. <laughs> There's our f bomb. We got one. Did we yes. talk? Did we talk about this though? Didn't we, Greg? About the commissioner came out and kind of was like the the, the well, US he posted the, the open cup because the stadiums aren't nice enough and the field conditions are bad. Yeah, this no is shit. Like, well, like, the, but if you can kind of trickle it down and those teams host some games and bring in some revenue, then all that can get better. Right? Like, 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 let's try to build that up. Exactly. So, now, the interesting part yeah. about all this, and I, I just want to go on, off on this article before I let Boa go, because I know he's about ready to lose his shit. No, no, no. We're good. <laughs> the, so there's the CONCACAF Nations League, right? That was played that ended Sunday in Vegas. U.S. beat Canada in an ass whooping. Um Sure. After after putting Mexico through their paces, that's probably the wor the worst Mexican team I have seen in my lifetime. Right, because uh, because it's real simple, right? God, they're our bad. Are playing, our players are playing in Europe, and they're playing in the Mexican domestic leagues because the owners of those clubs are overpaying them, right? And they're not getting better, right? Yeah, but also, but also, but, isn't Mex but that's the Mexican B team because the the Mexican A team is prepping for Gold Cup, right? Right, right, yeah, but. So Gold Cup is going to be three weeks long. There's going to be 16 countries. There's 31 games and 15 venues. All this travel, right? Um, and it's a month. It's essentially like it's going to end the same week that the League's Cup involving 47 MLS teams and Liga MX teams begins. Is that this year? Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. Summer. yeah. So the Gold week. Cup ends and then the League's Cup begins. Like it's literally like boom, boom. Yeah. So I understand the frustration. And then you've got like a bunch of friendlies that are going on after that, like because European and South American teams are going to play a series of friendlies. So you've got a bunch of you've got a bunch of South American players here in the States, obviously playing in MLS. Right. Which everybody kind of is aware of that at this point. Like. There's 32 teams with 64 games playing in the Women's World Cup. There's just a lot going on, right? That doesn't affect the, the MLS as much as they think it does. But they think that uh, – my, my guess is based on reading this is like, hey, too many players are getting pulled in too many directions. There's too much soccer to watch. Like, if you think there's too much soccer to watch, you are not part of the solution. Steve Terundolo. Yeah, there, I did of course. it. Like, of dude, course. you you can manage your team, manage your team, get them to these championships, and then get pissed because you lost in the championship game that you should have freaking won. So now you're gonna come out and bitch, like you should have won that game, and then it yeah. wouldn't you wouldn't be pissy right now, right? You wouldn't be but, mad that you didn't win the Concacaf Champions League final. Like, if you'd won it, you'd be all happy. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Like and to yeah. your point, yeah. And to but it's point. what it's what Bo was just saying. Yeah, exactly. Bo was just saying. Yeah. You know. You know. It's it's the whole thing is how many you know how many developmental players do you have on your in your stable, you know? And if you've only got two teams, if you only got the first team and the and the reserves or whatever you want to call them, yeah, that's a lot of games that you got to figure out how to play. 
You know, you don't have anybody to pull up because you know what? The MLS won't talk to the USL. Maybe that would what the USL could do is well, help you out with, with development and, and more bodies. The roster the roster issue is that they don't have enough players on their roster when when international play happens. And you've got clubs like Chicago that won't release their players well, to go play in the U twenty three World Cup or growing pains. It's yeah, just no, it's it is. it's but, one of those things where they've got to figure out a way, like the salary budget, like they wanna like they want to impose a salary cap and do some like moving around the, the Garber bucks, as I call them, the funny money, right? Like, oh, you can only have three designated players. But if this guy wants to come over and be, you know, underneath that, that dollar amount, you can. But you can pay that de- designated player whatever you want. Like, I mean, well, Messi's guess what, come, guess like, what shoes? Guess what shoes Messi, Gerard, Lampard, and Beckham all wore? Adidas. Adidas. Right. <laughs> Coincidence. But to My your point, to your point, Ryan, about the, the bullshit, you know, there's this thing in Europe called the Nations League, which doesn't mean anything. Basically, what they did was they took the friendlies and put them in leagues. Right. So they could charge more for charge payment. more money. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. We all know that. OK. Yeah. So Spain just beat Holland in the Nations League final. And it's their it's first major country. trophy that they've won in. Right. But I read that. It means it. nothing because again, Croatia. They beat Croatia. They yeah. beat Croatia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but my point is, they had they had the boys playing. I mean, Virgil Van Dyke was playing yeah. for Holland, and yeah. I mean, they had their pros after playing fifty six games for their clubs playing. Well, yeah, Modric played in that game, right? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah I watch. I watched part of that. Um, As so Evie says, money. It's money. Well, money. it it is about nothing money, wrong but, with it. Nothing like, wrong with that. Right? Well, you package it for television. That's no. There's nothing wrong with it if you if you if you use the money that you win and you build a deeper stable, right? Fair enough. But right. if you if you try to put all that on 24 guys or or let's say at the most 36 guys, yeah, you're going to wear them down. Yeah. You just are, you know. Yeah. And 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 you know and you know as we all know the other thing, the other thing about uh, the United States is. You know, the travel is much more vast than it is in Europe, you know, and it's exactly going from New York to L.A. is like what London to Moscow on a plane. Yeah. 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 But but here's the deal, guys. Here's the deal. You don't hear baseball complain about traveling. You don't hear hockey complain about traveling. You don't hear the NBA has stuff within their the NHLPA agreement to limit certain types of travel. Like yes. their players association is taking care of their players. Yeah, but well, people yes. forget the NHL, but they play every other night. They play every, every other night. Or and they play with that. broken feet. I don't know. Stanley they Cup finals. Or <laughs> two nights rest. Right. But my point oh, my, my point is my point is this. All of those leagues, right? NFL. They they charter, you fly in, you play, you fly on to the next thing in a plane, in a plane that's your plane. Not you, you're not sitting, you're not in group C, you know, <laughs> one through 30, welcome aboard. Okay. Chicago right. fire. Right. You know, and yeah, yeah, that kind of travel blows. Right. Yeah. Yep. But, you know, but, you know, if you, if you spend the money to take care of the people, like you said, Ryan, if you spend the money to take care of the people that you're employing, okay. Uh, uh, who was it? I was. Oh, Wolves did this when they when they got into the top level last year. They they spent an inordinate amount on research on physiologically how could these guys play every three days, basically, because they didn't yeah. have a big they didn't have a big deep stable. And what they did was they made sure that you know travel was as easy as possible by chartering and all that kind of stuff. Nutrition was as easy as possible by making, like Carla said, they had their own chefs travel with them, all that stuff, and they had they had a good run from it, right? Because right. they took care of their players. Well, they also and, paid an incredible amount of money back in 2020 to get a whole new physio staff. Yes, yes. Like they yeah. put a ton of money into making sure that they had proper trainers and recovery yes. and all that stuff leading in into that. Yeah, um, and there's an article from Tim Spires at the Athletic if you want to check out. That. Yeah, and they about, didn't yeah. they didn't they buy like like two or three cryo chambers and yeah. mean, stuff that was just like yeah. you know for for a former championship English you know mid level pro team to to spend that money on that stuff 
was just amazing. And it worked. It um, worked. And to your point, and this was what now? Fuck. 30 years ago, 30, 28 years ago, one of my South African players in Boca was on trial at United. Um, and he said, Alex Ferguson, there's a couple things. One was the drills were all very, very simple. And the second thing he said is Alex Ferguson said, when they travel to Europe, we are always on Manchester time. So if we're playing in Moscow to us, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. Right. Mm -hmm. or, or the opposite, whatever. So we train. We're on at 10 o'clock. That's what, no, that's it. We're not going right. to change and train at night this time and train in the morning next time and all that. It's really, really interesting um, how real football people uh, think. So how's this going to work with Messi going Miami to Vancouver? Well, he's going to have his own jet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he is? It's a Beckenbauer thing. I'm sure he will. Yeah. Like, I would think that he'll travel with the team to, like, close matches, but then other ones he'll be on his own. Yeah, but yeah. okay, so what does he do with his teammate? Does he take him? Especially the guy he just signed, his buddy from Argentina, Sergio. Is he? Oh, hey, you can get on. Who's the manager there, by the way? Didn't they fire one of the numbers? Yeah, they fired Phil. Yeah. Oh uh, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be right, Ryan. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's gonna be Martinez. Ta ta. Oh, gonna... uh, that was yeah. one. Of, yeah. oh, there we go. There we go. Um. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it could be it could be anybody. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> it's matter. Manager. It's message like, agent. He could be he could be a player manager. He, they could do whatever yeah. they want. I mean, but they're they, not. <laughs> they could. Um, um, right now it's Javier Morales is the interim, I believe. There. Um, well, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, he is. And then Darren Powell and Sebastian Howie. Straha are are still there. Um, Darren Powell was he involved with Wake Forest in some way? No, Darren Powell played at UNC Greensboro. UN, there you go. Yeah, then, that's right. Played at played at uh, Greensboro Dynamo. Great okay. guy, great guy, great kid. Good, yeah. good segue to the MLS and the global thing. Have you guys been reading about the Saudi Pro League? The yep. SPL? Yep. The what league? The Saudi Pro League. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's where it's Greg's uh, favorite thing to read about. It's where Ronaldo yeah. went, but they're yeah. driving the price up for the MLS. I mean, they've signed some legitimate. Chelsea guy, Conte left. Now, again, these are 33, 34-year-old players. But what's that going to do? You know, they, they got a limited budget. These MLS guys have budgets. So I'm wondering if that will affect. All right. I, I, got, I got three words for you. Chinese Super League. Well, that, they use that as a model. <laughs> I hope not because it's, no, it's a model of what not to do. They, they yeah, yeah, right, but yeah, yeah. So I was just curious. I, I just think it's going to make it more expensive for the MLS to bring in these messy That's guys. That's probably true. The only thing we got going for us is you know you got to live in in freaking yeah. yeah. Well, and that's that, that was why Messi is here and yeah. and not there because yeah. his yeah. wife yeah. didn't want to live in the Middle East. Yeah, and then the other thing, fellas, uh, to your you know about the Super League Mexican United States thing, which is a great idea, but again, we need to be on the FIFA calendar, don't we? Probably <laughs> we, should be. We got to take it. Aren't we to it now though than we were in the past? Well, we, I mean, we got to take it the Brown and say, look, you know, we're never going to be the Cleveland Browns, we're never going to be the New York Yankees, but we're going to play August to May and just suck it up. But um, it is. I did have to look this up though, to be honest. Seattle. Is the first MLS team in the FIFA World uh, Club World Cup? Yep, and they got their asses kicked. Yeah, so I didn't know that because I don't watch FIFA clubs. We, club, we talked. We talked about that on a previous episode, actually. Yeah, because yeah, they got was, they got spanked. They got boat raced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so no no review tonight. I will do one next week. Uh, and last thing, just a big kudos to the under twenty threes who only let in two goals, but then let them into the quarterfinal, so they're out. <laughs> Um, but they did lose to the eventual champions, Uruguay. Yeah, um, Uruguay was good. They were, yeah, they were. were yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, again, you look at where those guys are playing. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but anyway, that's uh, but a good show, fellas. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, guys, we done. I mean, I'm good to be done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. I'm still like trying to recover from from chasing five and six year olds tonight. So nothing. No, nothing I like it was fun. Um, I do have one hockey reference that I want to make because we did talk a little bit about the NHL and some travel. There was a player for the Florida Panthers in the Stanley Cup final. Aaron Ekblad, I believe yeah. is how you say the last yeah. name. Yeah, had a broken foot, 
and it separated his shoulder in two places, like both shoulders essentially, and had a torn oblique, and he played the entire finals. Yep. Holy crap. So, yeah. like, when I say hockey players are built differently, <laughs> and we how talk you, about it every once in a while. skate like, on a broken leg? I don't know. It was a broken foot. It That's happened during the Boston series, and he played through it. So he played four series on that yeah, foot. Yeah, because it, in the Boston series was in the first round because they knocked the Bruins out yes, in round number that's one. Right. That's and right. they made it all the way to the finals. So he'd been playing from round one all the way to the Stanley Cup finals on a broken foot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the uh, FOSs, friend of the show fellows, checked in on a text here. Our friend Michael Taylor, who uh, is exactly is a year older than Carl Overbeck, he said – Carla's one of the is Carla is the most competitive person I have ever met. Wow. And that's Hammer. Hammer's not one for her for her hyperbole. No, I, you know, he's not. And game. and he was at he was at Chapel Hill for many years, so he's seen a lot of good players. <laughs> a few. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. All right, boys. Until next time, thank you for everything. For listening and watching the three old goalies be sure to join us next time Just like subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our great content you can follow us on instagram or twitter can't get enough of the three old goalies be sure to check us out at www.3oldgoalies.com